Uh, morning, YouTube. It is uh, four thirteen on this Monday. Uh, welcome back. Hope you had a good weekend. Uh, today's topic is the uh, M Drive Part One Quantum Vacuum Plasma Thruster. Way too early. Or that Higgs proson has spaced the electrons like the magnetism of particles and momentum to receptors, radiation, or mathematics. A solution, asteroid. What am I doing up? Um, <clears throat> so today, uh, today's topic is the M drive, and um, I decided to split this into two. So today we'll talk about M drive part one, tomorrow we'll talk about M drive part two. Uh, the M drive, what is the M drive? Um, if you recall in a previous episode, uh, quantum vacuum plasma thrusters, uh, the M drive is a new thruster, uh, and the way thrusters work, uh, you have a propellant, uh, that you shoot out of a nozzle, and by shooting out the propellant, you move forward, uh, the drive or the vehicle that, uh, your engine is attached to. Uh, you can either burn chemical uh, and then, you know, those get thrusted out of the nozzle. Or you can uh, use electromagnetics, um, either uh, a magnetic field to push out propellants or, um, uh, in this case, you use microwaves. Um, the M drive shoots microwaves to push on particles and as the particles leave your your M drive moves forward. So the difference between the M drive and a typical um, thruster is that uh, the particles that you shoot out uh, pop in and out of existence. So they pop in and out of existence out of the quantum vacuum. Uh, so particles will pop into existence the microwaves push on them, those particles then get propelled, and then they pop out of existence, so your engine moves forward. Um, because you're using particles that pop into existence, you don't have to store propellant, and because those same particles pop out of existence, um, your your M drive really doesn't have a nozzle, it's, it's more like a box uh, that's contained. Uh, and so this has caused a lot of controversy because, you know, to, to satisfy conservation of, of mass and conservation of momentum, uh, because you're not shooting anything out, you shouldn't have any forward motion. Um, and so, you know, a lot of scientists are like, well, wait a second, no, 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 you go back to the drawing board, your, your mathematics, your physics doesn't work here. Well, uh, NASA has been tinkering with this, and in the past, uh, we talked about how they they set up the test, and they verified the setup, uh, and they looked at the previous versions of the test, and verified those setups, but they hadn't yet really done much with it. Um, <clears throat> well, recently, <laughs> they did uh, a lot more with it, so they, they actually conducted the test, uh, and they found positive positive thrust um, again they're not tackling they're not tackling the, the physics behind it or trying to find an explanation they're just they took an M drive they set it up they turned it on they found positive thrust uh, and this time they did it in a vacuum so um, you know in the past they they thought well maybe you know maybe you're seeing some kind of positive thrust because you're you're manipulating the, the air molecules and the air molecules are doing something well in a vacuum you don't have your air molecules so now there there uh, there's more with this test there's more um, substantiation of this M drive which is really kind of exciting actually <laughs> um, so let's say let's say this thing actually works um, you know we'll leave We'll leave it to the physicists to figure out the mathematics behind it and, and the realities of it. But let's say this really does work. Um, 
and you can you can rely on particles that pop into existence and pop out of existence that means you don't have to carry any propellant uh, which means that your engines and your vehicles are a lot smaller all you really need is electricity um, and so you know f battery or you know solar energy or if you wanted to um, you know nuclear power or whatever however you wanted to, to power your satellite you don't need propellant and so your your vehicle is a lot smaller um, you know doing the math if if you have an engine that continually kicks out see currently with propellant engines you you kick out to give you your uh, your velocity and then you stop because otherwise you're gonna run out of propellant if you don't have to worry about running out of propellant you just leave the engine on all the time which means that as time goes on your your vehicle goes faster and faster and faster and so they're doing the calculations on how fast you know vehicles could you know could get to certain destinations you could get to the moon in four hours which right now I think you know it, it takes several days to get to the moon uh, when you're worried about propellant um, <clears throat> you could get to Mars in 70 days they calculated um, and you know currently it takes about eight months or so um, so that's a significant saving 70 days is to a little over two months uh, you could get to Alpha Centauri, which is our, our nearest star that we know about. You could get there in about 90 years or something like that. So, you know, huge, uh, again, be, because you don't have to worry about propellant, you can just keep the engine on the whole time. Um, your travel times are a lot shorter. Of course, you have to so you accelerate and then you get to the halfway point you have to decelerate <laughs> as as you approach but whatever you know and again you don't have to worry about propellant burning so um so you know if if we continue to do this and, and it, you know the, the group at nasa that that is working on this they this is the this is the group that was set up to to sort of investigate advanced propulsion ideas you know, so their mission is to is to figure out new advanced propulsion ideas as opposed to trying to, you know, stay within the lines and only use physics that makes sense. Which is kind of cool um, because they're, you know, they're going to, again, their, their focus is, is, uh, is the result, not necessarily the, the, the physics behind it. We'll let the physicists catch up, but, you know, if this end drive proves, uh, you know, Con continues to <clears throat> to uh, to be successful, then we could very quickly here be looking at new propulsion. You still need rocket propulsion to get off the ground. The M drive is not that powerful yet. Um, they're gonna tinker with it more, make a few changes to the to the microwave source um, to try and get more power out of it. But um, I I don't know. It, reading the article, it looks like. Uh, it looks like good news to me, I think. Uh, hopefully they can do more with it. And like I said, we could, we could see space travel drastically change. So good job, guys. Good job, NASA. Um, all right, I got to go to work. You got to do whatever it is you do. Uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow.